Hey, thanks for tuning in for another episode of Nerd Talk here on the Nerd Network. Today, we are looking at the second episode of Game of Thrones House of Dragons spinoff on HBO Max. With me today, we have One Boar and DC Harlow as our two guest nerds. One Boar, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing all right. Looking forward to some more House of Dragons. As am I, DC. I'm looking for better House of Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a nice preview, folks, for the episode. We're getting ready to film here. Uh, I'm not, not going to make friends tonight. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, you don't know. I might be on your side. Uh, so as I said, we were looking at the second episode, Rogue Prince. Uh, it came out last Sunday as I smacked my microphone. Um, this episode was directed by Greg Yatanis, written by Ryan Kondo with a credit to George R.R. R. Martin. Comes in at 54 minutes. As we do with all of our reviews, we're going to start with our non-spoiler thoughts up top. Then we're going to dive into spoilers after the break. Uh, so, DC, if you could start with your non-spoiler thoughts on this episode. My non-spoiler thoughts. Um, I just, just, just lazy writing. That's that's all I could think of. Like the whole entire episode is just lazy writing, and uh, that's really hard. That was my only takeaway. Honestly, that was my sole takeaway from all of that. There were no surprises or shocks. Yeah. Um, even the even the the big uh, tense moments, as uh, an article I read uh, yesterday, I, I felt were boring. It was not tense at all. It was pretty predictable. But I, I could be the only one in this little camp over here by myself. No, no, you're, you're not. not. Uh, John. Yeah. I thought, I thought the big reveal was really obvious and yeah. they, they, they should be out. Um, I, if I had any one thing to quip about the show so far is I was really disappointed that we didn't get new music for the intro. That is so... <laughs> so hear me out. That's one I mean, of the things I liked. Because to me, that's the theme of Westeros. It's not of Game of Thrones. I would not have minded if they rolled elements of the original theme mm -hmm. in, but still gave us something new. Kind of like, um, going back to Star Trek, right? You know, Strange yes. New Worlds incorporated elements of the original series intro into what they were doing. So there were a lot of recognizable elements, but it was still its own thing. And, and it was very they good. didn't even bother with... No, the, man. With the they intro. take that music money and sink it into more dragons. That's what I care about. <laughs> Yeah, and, and um, that they did. But but yeah, so, I'm, I'm with DC. I, I the the story just felt really loose. It wasn't a, a lot of cohesion um, going on. I mean, there. here's the thing. As far as my overall thoughts, I would say we get it. We get it. In Westeros, women suck. We understand. Move on. That is clearly the theme. Oh, also, King, yeah. you got to get married, make more babies, and everyone will be happy. Done. Yeah, it, that's it. it just, that was it. Yeah, <laughs> it it just didn't feel connected. Um, yeah, it, and honestly, the second big reveal, I saw that coming a mile away too. Um, yeah, and we'll we'll dive into that when we get into spoilers. But um, yeah, you know, I mean, the graphics were great. The mm -hmm. music was good, aside from the intro. Uh, and yeah, I love that. In I love that music too, but I, I wanted something different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, we get to see, you know, our young uh, princess, you know, feeling her way into some stuff. Um, and or just barging in. Or that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, you know she she she's trying to put her own stamp on things, and um, you know, it, so there were good moments in the episode, but the overall episode was kind of me. Yeah, I agree. So I'm ready if you guys are to dive into spoilers. Hit it. All right, Mike. So here is your spoiler alert. Welcome back, folks. If you are still with us, that means that you either A, have seen the episode and you're ready to dive in, or B, have not seen the episode and don't care. because. So, I'm excited about this conversation. First off, 
This episode again brings back Patty Considine, Matt Smith, Rizzi Fons, Steve Toussaint, Eve Bess, Sonia Mizuno, and we do need to make a correction. Last episode, we said that Millie Alcock was a 30 year old person playing Princess Targaryen. It is not correct. Or, excuse me, we said Emily D'Arcy was. The girl currently playing Princess Targaryen, or Princess Rhaenyra, excuse me, is not Emily D'Arcy. Emily D'Arcy is now listed as the princess. Millie Alcock is listed as young Princess Targaryen. So she will be playing her until the time jump. And if you go on IMDb, there are pictures of Emily as an older Rhaenyra. Um, or Rhaenyra, That makes me. a lot more sense. It does. Because she's very young, and she's 21 or 22. So, which I was, is, I, was, I yeah. was watching the episode last night going, man, they really de-aged her. Right. It's really interesting to see how they take that <laughs> off as time goes on. Yeah. Right? Cause, and that's one of the things that happened. That we fast-forwarded like a year mm -hmm. in this episode. So. Six months. Is it only six months? Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's dive into our first section. So, again, just recapping, Emily Darcy has not shown up on screen yet. Uh, so we are looking at Millie Alacock as the princess. So we start this episode six months after the first episode, after the death of Emma and Prince Balin. Uh, Prince Damon, we find out, has taken Dragonstone, the ancestral home of the Targaryens, as his home, um, and surrounded it by an army of gold cloaks. We know that Prince Kragas Dahar, also known as the Crab Feeder, is now running rampant in the Stepstones and has taken some of Lord Corlys' ships and fed the crew to the crabs. Uh, and we see in a meeting of the small council that there's massive pressure on Viserys to solve this and in this meeting Rhaenyra actually oversteps during the council and basically is sent away because again our theme this episode is women suck so we're going to send her away because she spoke um, guys this whole first chunk the politics the back and forth one more your thoughts up top on this well okay so first of all the whole crab thing they needed to stretch that out a little more and get a little more detailed into what was going on there. They really glazed over it, and that could have been a whole episode all by itself. Um, you know, they they you know, we didn't really get to see the battle. We just saw dead guys on a beach and crabs eating eating them. And mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot. They're of not blood. dead though. They're yeah. suffering. Yeah, but there wasn't any context, right? Yeah. You know, and they, that's how they kind of started the episode, um, and then, and then, yeah, then, then we get into the small council. You know, our young princess voices her opinion, and she's immediately said, "Yeah, you might want to leave now. You know, go away, little girl. You don't know what you're talking about, right?" But you did see the um, uh, the uh, Valerian guy. He was like, yes, her, what she said. <laughs> yeah. But everybody else was like, go away, little girl. You know, and yeah, you know. Um, and the king did not support his own heir. Um, and that's pretty telling. Mm -hmm. so. I agree. DC? Yeah, I, I thought that this whole encounter... I, it's hard to talk about this encounter without talking about the whole rest of the episode because it's, yeah. it's literally – the entire episode is literally filled on uh, switchbacks. A, a character's going one direction. They immediately turn around and go the other direction, and they turn around and go back the other direction, and it's like, wait a minute. W what is happening here? Are, are you with this person? Or are you not with this person? Are you for this person? Or are you against this person? Because no one can tell at this point. Yeah. Um, and, and you see that with the king like twice, and it's just like I don't get it. Um. And again, the the whole thing with the, the lazy writing still it starts there, um, and, and this may not be as lazy because you have the opportunity to go. Okay, she has a good point. Let's let's follow her lead. Maybe she has a good idea, and let her start to be a leader. Mm -hmm. Or you could go the direction of no, little girl, like you said, it's it's time for you to leave now. You, these are these are men's politics, and we're not going to have any 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 females in here right now trying to tell us what to do. And that's the, clearly the direction that they went. <clears throat> Would the other direction have been any better? <sighs> I don't know. It, it, it could have been an opportunity to start building alliances for herself there somehow. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but well, but the overall know, conversation about the whole thing just it was just kind of it was weak. 
it was a teachable moment for her where the king, you know, even if he didn't do it right then, later in the episode, the king could have, you know, at dinner say, you know, I heard you, but yes. here's why what you said doesn't work. Or here's why we can't do that right now. You yeah. know, and, and yeah. teaching her how to be a ruler. Yeah, thick in the politics of it. Completely yeah. absent there. Mm -hmm. They had a wonderful opportunity for the father to mentor the daughter and help mold her into the queen she's supposed to become. And nothing. Yeah. And I think that later on he sees that too. He sees her potential when she chooses the replacement uh, king's guard. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're like, "Oh, well, this person." And she like goes just blows the politics. I don't care. This is the only guy who actually has right. has any experience fighting anybody. Why do we care if this guy's house contributed five hundred gold pieces for whatever bridge? It doesn't right. matter. This well, guy again, is going to protect the king. Again, a teachable moment from the hand, though, mm -hmm. right? He said, you know, he, he, I mean, he tried, but when she blew him off, he, he didn't press it anymore. Right. right? You yeah. know, it, it, you know, there is a consideration to be made here because of alliances that you may, you know, may impinge on, um, uh, by making the choice that you're making, you know, you need to factor that in, or at least factor it into your decision-making. If you still decide, fine, but you really need to think about all of this because Agreed. It, it does matter, right? And 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 we see later those political divides start to happen, uh, yeah, because of choices that were made in that in that small um, small meeting, right? So I'm yeah, still with her. I'm counseling. telling you, I'm not going to make any friends this episode because I was still in her side. Oh, I, am I would too. want the guy that's got the I most am too. I'm just saying. I'm pretty that certain. There were, opportunities to help her develop and grow as a leader that were just thrown away yeah yeah i'm pretty certain that hbo's whole goal with this series is everyone's going to be on team rhaenyra because there's <laughs> well, no redeeming so, factors but, but on any DC. other side maybe so but i'm with dc it was done in a very lazy way. oh agreed yeah I, and here's the thing and this is what we've been seeing you talk about the switchbacks one where you made mention of the, the idea that the battle wasn't seen, the crap was lost over. Game of Thrones did such great storytelling because it took eight years from winter is coming to lich dragon bursting down the wall. Yeah, we never had a great season. It was more that, years in than that, that. And that series where six months to a year just went by between two episodes. Right. Right. And, and uh, they, not that they, long, but then they, there were definitely time gaps. But yeah, you're right. I don't yeah. think it was as large. Yeah, as like, so I think it was I, more I between think, seasons. I, you know, to give them a little bit of benefit of the doubt here, I think that they are trying to accelerate a timeline and try to feed as much intrigue into that as they can while still being at an accelerated rate. Mm -hmm. And I honestly think that's doing the show a disservice. Agreed. You know, well, yeah, I mean, because um, even, even especially if that's the case, if that is truly the case, then this episode was the longest un unfulfilling episode that they've done. Because you could, if you're going to try to yeah, pack it in, so much territory in the first episode, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, they did a episode one was fantastic. You know, they they covered a lot of things. They set a bunch of building blocks up. And then we get episode two. Um, and it just kind of feels like it's like you threw it away. Yeah. And in a 10 episode run, man, you, you can't throw an episode away. You, you don't have the, the opportunity for the way. Like, yeah. You don't have an opportunity to throw to have like yeah, just throw away episodes and just have filler. Right. I mean, you got to figure we've got eight hours of content left. So we've already had 20% of the season. So it's it's rough. So so let's talk about the second piece here. We're going to talk about um, the king again is being pressured to marry. Lord Corliss graciously offers up his twelve year old daughter. Gross. Yeah, that was real weird. And everyone feels that way. I'm glad. <laughs> Even Lord Corliss. 
even the daughter and the king. Yeah, I mean, at least they had the good decency to look uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and then in a last second switch, she uses Alice Hightower, which last episode we made mention of basically Otto Hightower offering his daughter on a platter. Yeah, so I want to But talk he's about been that really classy about it. Yeah, I want to talk about that for a minute. So, yeah. first of all, who was surprised that he picked her? No, no, no. <laughs> exactly. That that's the second reveal I mentioned in the first the first portion of this. Oh movie. yeah. Yeah, I I saw that coming from a mile away, and honestly, I like that choice better. Yes. But, you know, in the first episode, we're going ha ha ha. You know, he offered up his daughter to comfort the king, and I'm thinking comfort means sex, right? And that's then she read clearly, him a book. That's clearly not what happened. She was keeping him company, offering conversation and a shoulder to lean on. And I thought that was wonderful. Um, and I thought she was as surprised as everyone yes. else in the room that he picked her. And, and you know, I agree with him. But once again, the politics of the situation, he clearly created himself a problem. Um, and by alienating his most powerful ally. So, um, but I don't think he made the wrong choice either from a purely ethical and moral standpoint. Well, and I will say, I don't know if it's necessary, but we know in Game of Thrones, the actual Game of Thrones series, the Valerians are gone. So at some point in this series, the line of Corliss, or whatever it is, the line of Valeria, is going to end. That giant fleet's going to go away. Well, so, I, you know, I don't know how many seasons there are I mean, I, I can't, the it, show, but... <laughs> yeah, from the, from the talk of this episode, it almost seems like Corliss is, is literally the last of the Valerian. Like, his, his yes. family is, is it. Because they keep well, no, talking no, about old just, Valeria and like the, the he, place doesn't he, exist anymore. He, he was mentioning that his family history or lineage was older than the kings, but the Targaryens are of the Valerian line as well. Hmm. Um, and that then that's why that he wanted that match to happen because it was two Valerian houses coming together. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So I see. Yeah. The way the conversation went, it sounded. <laughs> When they were talking about old Valeria, especially when the king was talking to Millicent, it sounded like the Valerians were like the aristocrats, and then the Targaryens were kind of the enforcers, because they were the dragon riders. So it makes sense from a political standpoint that Corlys would be like, let's put us back together and remake old Valeria. But then he was like, no, I'm good. I want the one of age. <laughs> Can we get on a rabbit hole for just a quick second? Uh, you, that's you, what the show is for. Let's do it. <laughs> you mentioned the name just now, Millicent. And as soon as I heard that, my ears pricked up because isn't that the, the Red Witch that burned uh, uh, Stark's uh, – I'm sorry, Baratheon's daughter? Isn't she the one that tried to bring back – No, that's Miss Sam – Miss. it's something with an I or Y, isn't it? You're talking okay, so about the one that the the dude who was down south, and then she came up and like at the end of the Battle of Winterfell, she walked into this the the darkness and like pulled her necklace off and like faded to dust or whatever. Yeah, she the one that that brought Jon Snow back. Yes, um, she was she was uh, in league with the Baratheon brother, and they came. Yes, they yeah. Her daughter. yeah. So it's not the same person. Yeah, but she ended up um, connecting with the uh, the sea. Melisandre. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay, okay. All right, different person. No, yeah, Melisandre. Um, and I also thought um, the prostitute, but that's Miss Sun, Miss something else. Yeah, I was ashamed when she died. There's so <laughs> many names. <laughs> so many names. I liked her. <laughs> so yes no it's not the same person but um there's so many so many names that are similar in this series i have yeah. to like 
have a glossary open when I watch it. I will tell you that one of the things with this episode, I, I typically will watch TV while I play a video game because I'm a nerd and I have to be doing things or I'll get confused. Um, I had to stop playing the video game and actually watch, focus on the episode because typically I'm, I could follow a plot along. This was so confusing and so poorly written that you're right. At, at one point I was like, wait, when did he turn? What? <laughs> it was just Yeah, it, rough. It, it, they jumped around and there was no cohesion to the episode. Um, again, some fantastic visuals. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, you know, we'll talk about some of that in the upcoming segments here but um you know the uh yeah that scene wasn't one of them right yeah, let, let, let's move on <laughs> um, to the next bit and <laughs> i will say the last piece of this i will say that imdb really really is dropping the ball on spoilers here because she's now labeled queen millicent hightower wow <laughs> yeah i'm like come on so yeah um so let's go to our next section the confrontation after Damon steals the egg from the Dragon Keepers, Otto and Sir Kristen Cole and some of the, uh, the, the night people, they go to Dragonstone. They confront Damon on that iconic bridge from Game of Thrones. And then Caracas shows up, the giant red dragon, which was fantastic. Although it, I, didn't, I don't like the way he's, I don't like his representation. He's way too serpent-like for me. He, he screams uh, Lord Zed's giant all the, sword. All of the dragons so far have been very serpent-like. Mm-hmm. Yes, but Rhaenyra shows up on her dragon, which I think is Arius or something. Um, that felt more dragon-like, more compact, more solid. Krakus seems very sinewy, and in, I've never liked dra- It's not a bad look. The graphics are amazing. I'm just not a fan of that style of dragon. Well, so let's talk about another missed opportunity here. Right. I think so, George Martin's 12 year old son wrote this part of the story because it's just. <laughs> well, again, a missed opportunity, right? So the print, the, 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 the original heir apparent, right, um, goes and seals a dragon egg. They should have shown us that. Right? We should have seen the espionage and the the penetration of the facility or just him storming in there and taking one because he has the right to do so, right? right. They didn't do any of that. One voice says there's not enough penetration in this episode. It's my takeaway <laughs> here. Uh, but seriously, you know, they, they, they could have created a significant amount of drama where we're going to go, oh, crap, the king's going to be pissed. Right. right, right, but instead, all we get is a, "Hey, King, your brother did this. What do you want to do about it?" Right. It's a and classic it's- method of storytelling you're touching on called show don't tell, because something is always more entertaining if you see and experience it happening, rather than in the next scene somebody goes, "Oh, by the way, somebody broke into the vault and murdered a bunch of people and stole the crown jewels." Right. It's so much more fun to get yeah, a Mission have, Impossible have they, style they, they, like. Had they done that and then shown the king throwing a temper tantrum over it, yes. it would have been a lot more effective storytelling than what they did. Right. All right. But then, then again, that, there, there's a whole pl- plot hole there. He was only mildly upset. Rhaenyra, uh, Rhaenyra was the one who goes, hey, which dragon egg was it? No, mm-hmm. Nobody else figured out that there was like an issue there. Like there was a specific one. She's like, which one was it? Just tell me which one was it? And well, not only a specific just, uh, issue, but a specific <clears throat> intent. Yes. Right? Which you turns know? out to be a lie. <laughs> well, no, but the, the, well, when I say by intent, I mean he picked the egg that was supposed to be with the, uh, the, the you know, new egg. It's Balin. Right. I, I need to ask some questions about this because I don't know the answers to these things. One, if there are so many dragon eggs – that there's confusion of which one he took. Or not confusion, but they had, to, they had to specify. Why aren't there more than 10 dragons? Two, how long do dragons survive, dragon eggs survive outside of the little cooker pot? Three, how can he throw an egg around and not like scramble the thing inside? <laughs> I'm well, just... 
the legitimate questions, guys. Do you know the so, answers so, to these? So, so part of part. So to answer one of those questions, how long do these eggs survive? It's indeterminate because we see Daenerys uh-huh. hatch three of them, right? Um, after she had been carrying them around in a satchel for God only knows how long. Yeah. Right. And how long? And they thought these eggs were long dead and dormant, so they had not been kept in a way that would allow them to hatch for all that time, right? So clearly, these eggs are not very perishable. Um, and so it could be it could be decades before an egg like this is is hatched, or centuries. Yeah, or centuries. Yeah, absolutely. And Damon remember, wasn't. Remember, Dragon dragons in most mythologies, including Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that, live for millennia. Yeah, right. And my thought process is, if you, it's if I was king, all seven of my king's guard would be dragon riders. I'm just saying. Well, like, you also have to, you also have to feed them. I mean, look what yeah. Daenerys is hey. doing. Look at episode one. Dude was chopping balls and hands off. Feed him to drag. Like that that's how you keep law and order. You steal something, you're dragon chow. Yeah, that's so, so that's, once again, that's a, a lot of offered, limbs. Once again, a missed opportunity. No, no, no. The right? whole person. You steal something, you get eaten. But once again, a missed opportunity, right? This is the house of the dragons. Right. Seeing more about the care and feeding and whatever else of these animals these creatures right including their freaking birthing chambers which yeah. they would have done if we had seen the prince go and steal the egg um yeah no they they miss a big opportunity here of really great storytelling really great plot development just really great information that we still don't have so yeah great um, yeah, so back to the actual scene. Um, <laughs> well, um, the confrontation between Rhaenyra and Dave, or Rhaenyra, excuse me, Rhaenyra is the older princess, uh, Rhaenyra and Dave. DC, what was your thoughts on this confrontation? And basically, her saying, Go ahead, kill me, see what happens. Uh, I- it was it was clearly a ploy. I, I think that their relationship goes very very deep. Um, Damon, the very beginning of the first episode, Damon gives her this very special necklace. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she's even even wearing it in that scene, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, <clears throat> but it, they, they definitely have a much deeper relationship than probably even her dad realizes or knows. Yes. Um, so it was definitely a ploy. She definitely knew he wasn't going to hurt her. And she probably knew that by going there, yeah, she could prevent bloodshed, but she could also just kind of put the, the situation to an end, period. Because he would see her, he would give in to her. That's his favorite only niece, uh, definitely his favorite person in the whole universe. Um, so there, there was really never any true danger there. And I, I think it, 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 to me, in the back of his mind, he's probably thinking, look, she's trying to be very grown up. I'm going to let her have this one. You know, she's the heir. She's kind of flexing her muscles. I'm just going to just going to walk away from it. Yeah. I and I agree. Oh, well, real controversy. Quick, before you jump in, <laughs> I will say that I loved her outfit in this because she's got that black leather outfit, but her sleeves are dragon scale, mm. which I love that. That was awesome. Go ahead, one more. Yeah. So I think that confrontation had a different. I think when she showed up, first of all, her dragon on the bridge, ready to annihilate his men, number one. Number two, the consequences of killing the heir would not have achieved his goal. Um, And um, I think that she won the gambit is what happened. Um, Now, he... He played it off by just tossing the egg at her, but um, he lost that gambit, um, and I think that that's going to play out later. So I'm, I'm not even sure there was a real gambit because he he the letter that he left behind 
mind was I'm getting married. My wife is pregnant. We're having a son and I'm taking the drag for him. And then you have this confrontation is like, oh, we're his girlfriend, the girl he, he took from Westeros is like, wait, you told him we were getting married? Wait, you said I was having a baby? And then she just walks away. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, she's like, like I don't want no part I of don't this. want a baby. This body's yeah. never going to have a baby. Your body <laughs> can't have a baby. I can't even have one. So I don't know why you're telling people the lies. Uh, so I, That's going to so get her I, killed. So the gambit to me, yeah. The gambit to me is that the, there was no gambit. It was like a massive bluff to see what the king would do almost. Like, right. is he going to do anything? Does he have right, the stones to actually the, come at me? The princess showing up was clearly a surprise. Oh, yeah, 100%. And, and the way she revealed herself by coming up out of the cloud. That was cool. Yeah. I liked cool. that. It was, it was very shark coming for the was chunk. One of, as I said, there are some good moments in this episode, and that was definitely one of them. Yeah, because I, I think that there's a surprise look on both um, High Tower and Damon Space uh, kind of said a lot. Like, Damon didn't know what was happening. Hightower definitely didn't know what was happening. Was this like a completely some other dragon from some other plate? Who is this? What what could this possibly be? And then she arrives like friggin' Batman off a rooftop, just boosh. Well, and then when the king finds out and confronts her, mm. she turns it around on and says, Look, I prevented bloodshed by doing what I did. And the king was just you could just see the king melt when that happened. Uh, once again, going to the acting prowess of the man who's playing the king. Yeah. He just, you could just see his body sag in defeat when she said that. And, and, and his, ex his explanation. Realized she did the right thing, even if it wasn't what he wanted her to do. Yeah. But his explanation, too, was very heartfelt. I mean, you when he's, he's given this big, boisterous, you know, powerful, you should never, blah, blah, blah. And she says, I prevented bloodshed and he's like but you don't understand i would lose you i mean that was yeah. like any father's perspective at that moment was everybody yeah. was going oh he's so right <laughs> <laughs> so i want to say and i don't know if it's this episode or the previous episode where we touched on um the king was the writer for was it Raloon or the dragon oh, i couldn't even begin. The, the really yeah, big one dragon the really really big one um, called the Black Dread. I I think it's symbolic that the king doesn't have a dragon anymore. He doesn't, or we just haven't seen it. He doesn't, because the Breloon, Breloon or whatever died. Uh. He was the last. He said the last living creature with memories of old Valeria. Mm. So I think that is very symbolic of the king's power. Because now we're seeing him, and he's he, even with his daughter, he has no power anymore. So it's well, fathers rarely have power when it comes to their daughters. Well, that's fair. <laughs> As Very a true. father myself, I can Very true. That. <laughs> so let's jump into the king. Um, we talked about last episode the king's health. I'm doubling down on the fact that I don't think he feels pain. No, I disagree. Now you do. I think he has nerve damage in his hand where he didn't feel um, because they talk about the necrosis going on in his hand. That's why they, they did the um, the mealworms or whatever. That right, were, the, the, the maggots. maggots that, that were going to eat away the dead flesh. I don't think he has any feeling in his hand, which is why he didn't notice it. The piece on his back, I think he felt because he pointed it out to the maestro. The, the maestro. Uh, or the Meister, or whatever they call him. Grand Meister. Um, yeah, the Grand Meister. Um, so they were looking at it, right? But the, the cut on his hand, he didn't even feel it until he looked down at his hands. He goes, oh, look, there's blood, right? Um, and that, yeah, and, and yeah. So I, I think, I mean, there's clearly a health condition happening. Yeah. Um, and I don't think he's going to get to live much longer. No, no, I agree. I think this series is going to be about Queen Rhaenyra on the throne. Mm -hmm. I don't think he makes it out of season one. I'm not I'll... sure he's going to make it to the <clears throat> second half of the season. <laughs> yeah, I was, he's in I was 10 episodes, say... according to IMDb, which again. <laughs> <laughs> well, for all we know, we have lookbacks. So, you know. 
That's fair. Yeah, what are what are our chances of each episode jumping a certain distance? We just had six. Well, months. I expect I think it's going to happen because. If we have an IMDb mention of an older version of the princess later queen, mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, we have 15 years to jump, I think, at this point. Right. So, so do we think next episode is going to be a year, 10 years down the line, something like that? or You can't go super far because this crap issue is imminent. So I think at yeah. most it would be six months. Yeah, there, there's an imminent threat. And then, of course, we have the villain the reveal, idiot. You want to call it that? Let's let's jump the, into that. Yeah, the Lord the Corliss and the Damon conversation. So that whole time, obvious. Yeah, the whole time we're zeroing in on Corliss, and he's like, "And you should do this, and you will be the answer. And you must." Do. And I'm like, "It's Damon. Turn the camera. Tur turn the camera. It's Damon." Oh look, it's Damon. <laughs> you like who else? <laughs> You know, you know what the worst part of that whole thing for me was was that you don't talk about my brother like that. I'll talk about my brother like that. You don't they, get to kill my brother. I get to kill my brother. Had they reversed the camera and focused on the brother instead, and and then, then revealed Corliss, saw the reveal, mm -hmm. that would have been better. But still that, obvious. <laughs> it was, yeah, we knew it was going to happen. They set it up to happen. The moment he chose the other girl for, for his new queen, we knew this was going to happen. But the storytelling aspect would have been better if they'd gone the other way around. Yeah. Isn't there a high tower in the Game of Thrones series? I think so. So we know the Targaryens and the high tower survive. We know the Valerians do not. I think we know who's going to win the series. Uh, fair. That's fair. <laughs> Damn it. You're right. Um, the Baratheons and the Lannisters. Uh, and the Starks. And the Starks. Well, they just kind of bystand, because remember, they're King of the North, not King of King's Landing. By choice. Yeah, exactly, which is so weird. I gotta touch back on something real quick. When that guy at the end of the last episode said I'm Recon Stark, did you even think it was strange? He was like, I'm Rickon Stark, Lord of Winterfell. I'm just like, bro, unclench everything. Dial it back. <laughs> like, whoa. Well, you know, he knows what his, you know, uh, great, great, great grandchild's going to do. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, he knows his great, great grandchild's going to get murdered in his wedding. Odor. Odor. Oh, no, I meant Sean Bean. But, you know. Oh, also murdered. Yes. But, I mean, yeah, ex no. Ex executed. All, all things aside, gentlemen, I would say first episode, amazing. Second episode, ouch. <laughs> it's like a current Marvel movie, second week in box office hall. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and, and you're right. With 10 episodes, they can't afford to squander one. They, they can't. Really, it know, goes they, back to the argument of filler episodes. I had such an issue during Star Trek the yeah, of filler episodes. You can't do that. That's a ten percent of your series. I would disagree with you on Picard, but that's another show. Um, uh huh. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. I mean, you're trying to cover a lot of territory with this Game of Thrones series, and really, the only thing you actually set up, the only thing they set up, was the fact that the Valerian guy was going to turn that's and then he did. all that is all they accomplished in this episode so i, I mean, would postulate go ahead i know i was gonna say that i, I kind of felt like i knew that from the beginning i, I really did because just just the fact that his wife was was denied the throne to begin with she's already bitter mm -hmm. and some of the things that were said like he kind of supports the king but then he doesn't kind of support the king it, it, it was it was kind of like it would have been better had they done somebody else to to do this little plot twist thing with instead of him. It just it just is super super obvious. You know what the, would have been the beginning. what would have been really epic is if it was the hand that turned. Yeah, yeah. You know um, that that I would not have seen coming, 
and would have been more interesting? I would postulate. Um, I don't think Damon's going to wipe out the crab feeder. I think he's going to recruit the crab feeder. So then he has Corliss's fleet, the crab feeder's fleet, control the stepstones and dragonstone. And that's the chunk of force that we see go against the king, high tower, basically the Starks and the Vale. Um, It'll be interesting to see if that, uh, how that unfolds next week. Yeah, I'm still waiting to see how the Lannisters are involved, but hey, yeah, we whatever. haven't seen much from them yet, right? You know, um, and, and they they were the purse for Game of Thrones, right? So, yes, Lannister gold. Right, yeah, right. They actually made the gold cloaks gold cloak gold. <laughs> if a woodchuck could chuck wood, he'd chuck all the Lannisters into the sea. Well, gentlemen, that's been our review of episode. <laughs> As we've killed DC, uh, he will no longer be returning. He's been. I was not expecting that. That was hilarious. And (laughs) (laughs) uh, that is our review: The Rogue Prince, Episode Two, The House of Dragons. Tell us what your thoughts are. If you were disappointed this episode, leave a comment. We would love to have a conversation because we're nerds and we like talking. Can you tell? Um, One four. Where can they find you, sir? Uh, well, well, before I tell them that, um, if you like this content, we also have the Rings of Power coming up um, end of this week. Um, and uh, next, I, next week? Is it the end of this week? I'm pretty sure it's the end of this week. Oh, good grief. <laughs> As my life gets smaller and smaller. Um, it's. It, I think it's going to be in a similar vein to this show, mm-hmm. So, you know, which is different from the other stuff that we do on the Nerd Network. So... Uh, if you like this kind of content, definitely let us know uh, so that we can continue to do it for you. Um, as far as where to find me, uh, you can find me at what more on Facebook and Instagram, um, where you can see all of my woodworking nerdiness. Um, and then uh, also uh, Dork Forged, uh, which you can find on all the social medias, uh, as well as Etsy, where we sell uh, all kinds of fun things like uh, this... Uh, well, maybe you're not seeing that so well. Can you hold it, um, hold it in front of you? Ah, there we go. So, yeah, you can see there, and it's got my name on it. Oh, wow. All right, All right. I might have to rethink this background. Um, <laughs> but uh, we also have a bunch of uh, Nerd Network uh, paraphernalia that uh, you can uh, take advantage of if you want your own Nerd Network. If here. I had it at reach, I would show it, but I can. Um, so, yeah, that's where you can find me. DC. Cool. Uh, also on Etsy at DC's Dragons. That's DCS Dragons. No periods, no spaces. Uh, a lot of dragon artwork and a, a line of angry plants. If you like plants and angry ones at that, that's where you go. Um, you can find me on Instagram at DC Dragon, D period C period Dragon. Uh, Facebook is DC Harlow. All right. And I can be found on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and TikTok at the jake the nerd and you can find the nerd network on facebook at the nerd network just yank the vows out of that for an accident in front uh and that is where our main communication is outside of videos and of course all of our videos here on the nerd network we've got superhero stuff we've got this we've got our news show our D show which airs every tuesday night and it's a ton of fun uh, but other than that we'll see you next time right here with episode three house of the dragons second of his name but have a great day See you next time. Hey, thanks for choosing this video here on the Nerd Network. John, what else can they find here on the network? Well, as always, we have a wide breadth of programs to fit anybody's needs. Uh, Every Monday, we dive into select nerdy headlines with our news show, News with the Nerds. Then also make sure to check out our new homebrew live D&D show, Adventures in Nevermore. This one airs every Tuesday evening. Also, every month, I take Jake on a journey through a vintage movie or a cult classic from the 70s, 80s, or 90s that I've watched and and loved, and he has missed out on his never seen before. We review these on my show, From the John's Vault. Also, we have Nerds in Conversation. This is our show where we examine current social, political, and civil issues facing the world today, but through the lens of nerd culture. Things like mental health and the value of diversity and inclusion. Finally, 
we have our flagship show, Nerd Talk. This is where the nerds get together and we discuss and review new movies and TV shows, mainly on the big three nerd franchises like Marvel, Star Trek, and Star Wars. However, we also hit into other properties as well, like the Orville, House of the Dragon, and Rings of Power. We have content to fit any nerd niche, so check them all out. Absolutely, and if you're here and you're still here at the end of this video, please go ahead and click subscribe and ring that notification bell so you get notified of all the content we drop here on the Nerd Network. And do us one more big favor, like it, so that YouTube will share this with all the people out there who have nerdy interests and want to come alongside us and share this with your friends. Because the more people we have in the conversation, the better the conversation is. Thank you for choosing our content here on the Nerd Network. And as always, have a great day and be safe. 